Hey everyone, Paul Monaco here, and we have a special guest with us. Hey guys, how are you? It's Coach Aaron here with Coach, Heavy Putter. And Coach Aaron. Coach Aaron, that's me. Ah, nice. Yeah. Where are you, Coach? Thank I know. You. Exactly. But, everyone, we want to kind of share with you a little bit of history with the Heavy Putter. Yeah. And I think, for me, it's been important to know a little bit about the, the legacy of Steve mm -hmm. Butcheri, what mm -hmm. he's done for the golf industry, and about some of the putters that we have in our hand and yeah. the origins of it and the beginning of it. So, Aaron, you've been with him the longest that I know of. Right. You've been with him for you know many, many years. Right. And just to, to start off with is that, you know, in our hand we have uh, the two original putters that were designed, which is the B-series, which is a mallet, and then we have the A-series, which is a blade version. Correct. And just before I forget, it's fascinating that Steve back then mm -hmm. put the weights on the putter head no one did that nobody did that mm -mm. and then many many years later there were companies that put them on the sole there were good companies that still do <laughs> still do yeah. right sure do i mean this guy was so ahead of his time oh yeah because he wanted to accomplish counterbalancing correct right right so aaron why don't you tell us a little bit about the merits of counterbalancing okay. and how these two putter styles, I mean, I, I mean where I think where I'm going with this mm -hmm. is that typically there's only two styles of putters, a mallet and a blade. Correct. And they come in different various shapes of mallets, oh, yeah. different various shapes of blades, right? All types. But essentially they're the same mm -hmm. um, product, the different aesthetics. Right. Right? So, I totally agree. So walk us through a little bit of the, now what we have in our hand before going, and then I'll leave you with this, is mm -hmm. that these are the original, these are the CNC milled Yeah, these heads. are really good, yeah, these were the right. And we only have X amount of these heads. Right. So once these came into production, mm -hmm. and they started to prove uh, successful in the marketplace, they went into then casting their products. Right. Because of demand. Right. So there are only a limited amount of these milled heads. Oh, definitely. Right. So. Let's go through the counterbalancing and why these two came out, and a little bit of history with Steve and and his, the eccentric engineer yeah. I call him. So yeah, yeah. no, it, it was he had a great idea because a lot of the putters, most of them, when you balance them, will balance down here, really mm -hmm. close to the head, which really creates a, a ball and chain feel or loss of control. I think of the putter. Right. Oh, um, good analogy. Yeah. So when he added weight, he seriously counterbalanced it. I mean, you can see when I balance this putter where it balances on my finger. It's almost halfway up the shaft. Okay, so what that does is help quiet the hands, the smaller muscles, because they just can't manipulate it. Your arms and shoulders take over, create a pendulum. Mm -hmm. Very simple. Uh, and what's nice about what he did with the weights, too, as far as the counterbalancing, mm -hmm. obviously, right. to counterbalance the weight and the handle, are, you know, for also heel or toe and heel hits. Mm -hmm. The head won't waver. It'll stay straight through or square. Right. Yeah, pr pretty pretty neat stuff. Like I said, to do something like this back in, what, 2004 or five. Mm -hmm. Way ahead of this time. Way ahead it of just time. feels so good. Especially on faster greens, too. You guys will love this. But something, I was on the phone with somebody yesterday, yeah. and, he, and they were from Canada. Okay, and okay. From, from Quebec, and he goes, I got a putter, and uh, you know we have some of these that are prototypes that, you know, yeah. you know the part is actually part of golf history that he wanted one. Big time. And, and he got one, in, and we had one in left-handed, which was a couple in left-handed, but yeah. he said his friend got one because he had the yips. Oh, yeah. Big you time. can't have the yips with a heavy putter, can you? Yeah. Because it's of that virtually, effect. yeah, it's virtually impossible. Um, just because it takes those smaller muscles out of hands, and, and even gentlemen or ladies that have the tremor, right. you know, the little tremor, mm -hmm. it will eliminate that also right. because of weight. But so, but when you make one of these putters, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot that goes into making this putter. It's not oh, just yeah. sticking a shaft into a head. No, <laughs> because because you know, if you don't mind, Aaron, I'm yeah, sorry. Sure. Get, get get a counter. Get a weight counter. Weight. Yeah, sure. I think I so. Have. So people, so we can explain and a shaft, so we can just kind of explain um, what the process kind of looks like. Well, this is uh, one of the weights we use. It's not the heavy weight. Right. There's a uh, shaft. But, there's a front of it. Yeah, yeah. We got the. Right. Right. So what we'll patience, do, guys. Yeah, guys. So this is a weight you can see. That's a stainless steel weight. That's about 200 grams. In the original putter, we have a 250 gram lead weight. Mm -hmm. So what I do is when I get the order for the length of the putter, I'll cut it with the variance of the top of the weight. So what I do is I also epoxy the weight down into the shaft. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. So it goes all the way down. Then I just grip over it. And uh, uh, it takes time. Obviously, right, you know, right. you have to mill the weight, make sure it fits and everything, but uh, it comes out wonderfully when it's done. Right. Now, mm -hmm. what, what's really cool, the way he's, the, the way Steve engineered these products uh, and these 
putters is that each putter model has, if it's a mid-weight, it has a different weight on the head. Counterweight. Yes. Right. In order to always have the same effective balance point Correct. of the shaft. Is that right? Right. right. That's exactly it. Because you don't want to lose the feel of the head. Right. You still want the feeling and, and, and you know, right. what you get from it. So. Exactly. So you can't put one of those heavy, heavy weights that you just had in your yeah. hand in a different pot. Of, no. In a different pot. Of it won't work model. right. No. It won't work right. <laughs> yeah, you'll but have that, a hard time. That, but that just blows my mind of, yeah. uh, of how... I mean, uh, how an engineer's mind works and how oh, I was yeah. able to um, take that idea mm -hmm. and put it into a, a practical product for golfers. Correct. And how to help golfers it's make more putts. It's unbelievable. It's just, it's just absolutely fascinating how one individual affected the golf industry. Right. It's just, listen. Look who counterbalances now. I mean, everybody. Yeah. They'll either do it in the grip, they'll do it somehow in, in the, the shaft. Yeah. But we are true counterbalancers because we use the real weight and um it's just part of us it's part of our history right it's just fascinating but anyways so we there the the two original models were the a series which i have in my hand right. which is the again it's the blade model right mm -hmm. correct and then we have the b series which mm -hmm. is a mallet model yeah um those were really i mean the aesthetics of it the way that he designed them uh, aesthetically is just really incredible uh and it's also functional too because I pick up my ball. I use the B1 putter, mm -hmm. so I can just pick up my ball with it. You know, when I pick on the yeah. ground, just scraping it up like exactly. that. Exactly, exactly. Like, I but, mean, you know, right around he used the ball to just match up with the ball, so you mm -hmm. have good alignment. It's right. so important. It's almost like the remember the two ball putter? From uh, yeah, I definitely kind of remember that, that, that kind yeah. of that little thing that yeah. had the two balls on it. Yeah, right? the white, yeah, definitely. You're right, the white. It was part. a good putter, it really yeah. was. It's still being used today. All over right. the place. <laughs> but anyway. I think the message we're trying to say is that everybody who's watching this video is like, mm -hmm. and, and Aaron, you've been part of this company for a long, long time. Right. I was fortunate enough to be part of this, uh, you know, about a year, a year, just over a year ago, where we, right. you know, we were able in the position to buy all the inventory. Right. Um, but uh, the reemergence of this brand has been absolutely amazing. And, and if you can just share with them, I called the, all the putters. These are all the orders for heavy putters, guys. Yeah. Never a slow day, guys. Never a slow day. It's Thank like, you. <laughs> if, you're, if you've been on the fence about getting one, this is the time to get off mm -hmm. the fence and, and get in with everybody else. I mean, everybody else knows the merits right. and the benefits of having a heavy putter. Exactly. I mean, this is the original product. There's no others. Uh, everything else to me is like a counter, not counterfeit, but but duplicated yeah it is the original. It, it really is yeah and you know just to reiterate folks the, these heads like he said they're limited i mean we're, we're, we're shorter on these than toilet paper right now so <laughs> <laughs> get online and get one of these well there's only x amount out. that were ever made yeah yeah so we, know, we don't have i mean this prototype so we found something that cole was going through the box yes he was just like <laughs> we got these prototypes i said well yeah. yeah this is a piece of doubt like i mean i have one in my hand oh with the actual with, with the actual markings on it yeah. and, that, and that's the way we're delivering it to the customer yes yeah. That is history. That's cool. Yeah. It's kind of. I neat. mean, guys, if you want a piece of history, I mean, there's no better time to do it in, at this very particular time because yeah. you're not going to have this chance again. And um, you're going to flat out putt better. Yes. It's not a gimmick we're selling. This works. Right. I, I think you should get one for history. Yeah. And then one for use. I'm perfect. Right. Why not? Right. Like, like art, you know. Sounds one. good. <laughs> like my cars. Yeah. Like one for yeah. a driver and then you have your Sunday car. Exactly. I'm right? with you. Two on different that. versions yeah. of it. So, anything else you want to add? Um, not really. I mean, you covered a lot of it, uh, but again, a piece of history. It's going to be going away, and yeah. uh, I think it's important to take advantage of it. But I mean, this guy was like, Steve Bacheri was, a, was I mean, like a mad scientist. Mm -hmm. I mean, never mind, I mean, there are people like Scotty Cameron, which are amazing, oh, yeah. but guys like Steve Bacheri, mm -hmm. I mean, who's a very well regarded in the golf industry as a mad kind of scientist to yeah. come up with something like this. Right. I mean, kudos to him that what he's done oh, for all of us, how we benefited by making the game of golf more enjoyable. That's the perfect way to say it. Right? Yeah. So, guys, thanks for watching. Coach Aaron, you're the best. Man, thank you so much. I love doing these guys. Yeah, these are fun. Yeah. Have a great Friday, guys. And again, get online, take advantage of it, all right? And play well, everyone.